So we're going to go, go ahead and dig in and I'm going to start with just some fun things that you can do right in the Google search engine. Now, how many of you use Google as pretty much your first line of defense? Yes, if you don't know something, what do you do? Google. You Google it, of course. And it's really pretty amazing if you think about it, how quickly Google has become a mainstream part of our lives and has even become a verb in our vocabulary. And so um, some of the things that you can do, of course, you can always use Google to just search for information. And that's probably what we use it for more than anything else. But you can also use the Google search engine as a calculator. If you ever need to know, let's say what, 798 times 3 uh, minus 20 divided by 4 plus 200 is for some reason, all you have to do is type it right in the Google search engine and then when you perform the search it will calculate it for you. Now do we have any math people out there? All right, notice that it even does the correct order of operations and so it starts with the multiplication and division and then it works its way outward from there. So that can be a little time saver because you don't even have to try to find the calculator in your desk drawer or um, you know find one that might be built into your computer. You just go to the Google search engine and type in what you want. Make sure that you use the asterisk if you're going to multiply and use the slash to divide and then you um, can just calculate almost anything. And so that's one of the things that you can do. Another thing that you can do with Google is that you can use it as a conversion tool. Now I learned this a few years ago when I decided to do something that was kind of crazy for me and that was that I wanted to make some scones. And I don't do a whole lot of cooking but I found a recipe that I thought would be perfect because it had only three ingredients. Self-rising flour, lemonade, and cream and that was going to make lemon scones supposedly. Uh, but then I realized when I got ready to make them that the recipe was written in metric units of measurement and it called for, I be believe it was um, 300 milliliters of flour. And I had no idea how much that was so I just came to Google and I typed in 300 ml in cups and that told me that it was about one and a quarter cups of flour. So I got everything measured and got ready to bake them and the recipe said to bake them at 180 degrees and luckily I noticed the little C beside that uh, or I probably would have had a disaster. So once again in Google I just typed in 180C and F and that told me to bake them at about 350 degrees. And so I was able to make the scones rather successfully with the help of Google. Now the key to doing a conversion is to use the word N, I N in your search. Um, and you can do all sorts of things. I could do something like one mile in meters or one mile in feet or one mile in inches and it will convert that for us. You can even convert money. I could do something like $100 in euros and it will convert that. So uh, right now it's at 79.68. This number of course changes all the time depending on the current exchange rate and it's sort of interesting. I don't know enough about economics uh, to really analyze this but uh, in the past few years since I've been showing this it's ranged everywhere from about 72 to 81 and it keeps moving back and forth and I don't know whether it's good news or bad news when it goes up or down. Uh, I guess maybe it depends on whether you're buying or selling. Um, but anyway, it's kind of interesting to be able to do those things right in the Google search window. A third thing that you can do here is that you can use Google as a dictionary. If you need something defined, you just type the word define and then put a space and then whatever word you would like define. Um, and so, uh, if I choose to define the word congruent, you'll see that the top result that it gives me is a dictionary definition of that word. And then it also gives you links to dictionary websites. So if you wanted to go and see more definitions or see it expanded, you could click one of those. Now, one of the new things that Google has added to some words, and they don't have it for all words yet, but do you see this little speaker icon beside it? So even if you don't know how to pronounce a 
word. You can click that and it will uh, say it for you. Let me turn my volume up a little bit and see if you can hear it. And so it will pronounce word. It